Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am going to be taking the Booktubers Snooker Book Tag. So this was created by Alan Morton, and uh, basically I got chatting to him in the comments on his video, and he tagged me, which is awesome, because snooker's my thing. Like, I'm not really into sport, but I like to play snooker, and I like to watch snooker. It's like the closest thing to sport that I guess I'm into. I don't really follow, like, world snooker anymore, but I used to. Uh, where I'm from in Tamworth, they, they, there was a guy called Dave Gilbert from Tamworth who was like once number 29 in the world or something. And like even back in the day when I was a little kid, I used to have this little black and white TV and it was one of those where it had like a tuning knob to tune between the stations. I think my mum and dad got it as an engagement present. So that would like, that's how old that TV was, you know? And, uh, and I used to watch snooker on that and obviously it's black and white so I had to guess what colours the balls were based on like the shade of it. So... If you, in case you're not like familiar with snooker, basically you have different coloured balls and they're worth different coloured points. Technically speaking, we could be really geeky and go for a one four seven break by answering uh, red, black 15 times and then doing yellow, green, brown, blue, pink, black. But uh, we're just going to go through the colours and points order. So uh, red, red are worth one point. So we'll start with the red and that is a name a book that made you see red. So for me... That was The Ode Less Travelled by Stephen Fry. Uh, and actually, it is a red book as well, which I hadn't even thought of. Now, this annoyed me so much that I actually, for humorous purposes, pretended to set fire to it and singe, singe the edges of these pages. This is basically Stephen Fry telling you how to write poetry, except he has quite a narrow-minded view of what poetry is. And so he's just really dismissive towards like free verse poetry, which is what I'm interested in. And then he kind of gives all these examples of stuff, like of, of how to write a villanelle or whatever. And then his examples are just really bad. And he just comes across as really smarmy and pretentious. And then there are things like in the index, where in the index or glossary of terms, it'll have like banana. Oh, yellow fruit. It has no place in a book like this. And it's just like, he's trying to be funny, but it wasn't funny. And it really annoyed me because I've liked Fry's other stuff. This is the first time I've come across anything that Stephen Fry's been associated with. That not only did I not like, but I downright disliked. In fact, it was one of my five worst books of last year. Okay, question number two is yellow. So these are worth two points. Name a book that has a summer theme or that you want to read in summer. So... This, as far as I know, doesn't have a particularly summer theme, and I don't particularly want to read it in the summer. But this is The Dark Half by Stephen King. And the reason I'm selecting this is because I want to read it this summer. In fact, I want to get to it very soon. So uh, watch this space. Question number three, green. This, these, these were three points. Name a book that represents spring. So I actually struggled with this one a little bit and the, the, the only thing I could think of was The Laura's by Sarah Taylor and this is just because it's a bit of a road trip novel uh, so uh, they're making their way from Virginia to California and so I think because of that you know you're you're kind of seeing the different states and it almost feels as though and as time passes and stuff it almost feels as though you're kind of driving your way from spring into summer I guess. That's the best I got for you there. Question number four, brown. These are worth four points. Name a book that has a somber or serious theme. So for me, I'm going for Shadows on the Tundra by Dahlia Grunkovacete. I'm just gonna read the blurb, I think, for this and you'll, you'll get why it's got a somber or serious theme. An extraordinary piece of international survival literature joining the likes of Primo Levi and Anne Frank. In 1941, 14-year-old Dahlia Grunkovacete and her family are deported from their native Lithuania to a labour camp in Siberia. As the strongest member of her family, the girl submits to 16 hours a day of manual labour. At the age of 21, Dahlia escapes the gulag and returns to Lithuania. She writes her memories on scraps of paper and buries them in a glass jar in the garden, fearing they might be discovered by the KGB. They are not found until 1991, four years after her death. This is the story Dahlia Grunkovacete buried. The immediacy of her writing bears witness not only to the suffering she endured, but also to the hope that sustained her. It is a Lithuanian tale that, like its author, beats the odds to survive. And I just think books like this are super important. And also, it was very sombre and serious. Like, it was talking about the risk of disease because people were dropping dead. And because they were in Siberia, the ground's under permafrost, so they can't break through it to dig a grave to bury the bodies, which is just awful. Question number five, blue. Name a book that's sad or melancholy. Blues are worth five points. Uh, so for this, I'm going for The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath for obvious reasons. I mean, Plath actually eventually committed suicide as well. But this really, I mean, I read it 
and saw it as almost like a feminist catcher in the rye, but also it's got some mental health representation in there as well. And it's just one of those books that's almost timeless in the way that it's written and the way that it reads. And it, it is sad and melancholy, but there is also hope in it as well. Question number six, Pink. Name a book that made you feel happy, uplifted or cheerful. So for this, I've gone for The Diabolical Club by Stephen Colgan. So this is actually the second book in a series. And they're basically like humorous cozy mysteries and they also are both so far have tied in with this fictional writer Agnes Crabbe so the first one was a book called A Murder to Die For and that took place at uh, like a festival of her writing and then this one has to do with like a lost manuscript of hers that ties in with a real world crime that happened in the past that is then repeated in the present so they're like you know how you have that with sort of thrillers sometimes where they jump between the past and the present this kind of has that but also then there's this novel which is based upon the past event as well. And it was all quite cool. Like, very well plotted and, and executed, but also just very funny and, you know, warm the heart. Question number seven, Black. Name a book that has a dark or depressing theme. So I'm going to go for Womb by Duncan Ralston. I mean, it has, uh, you know, the title is written with a, a what do you call it, umbilical cord, and there's a coat hanger on the back. And, uh, yeah... Well, let me read the blurb for this as well. The lonely motel holds many dark secrets, and room six just might possess the worst of them all. Angel knows a lot about pain. His mother died in this room. He's researched its history. He's come back today to end it, no matter the cost, once and for all. Prostitute Shyla believes the stories Angel tells her can't be true. Secrets so vile, you won't want to let them inside you. But the lonely motel doesn't forget. It doesn't forgive. And it always claims its victim. So yeah, like, trigger warnings for everything for this. Uh, and I believe it's like categorized as like extreme horror, but I liked it because, you know, reasons. And uh, unofficial question eight, tag some people. So I'm going to tag, I don't know who, who off the top of my head, uh, Charles Heathcote. He seems like someone who'd like a bit of snooker. Jason's Weird Reads. Hey Little Thrifter. I will tag uh, Jaden Reads. Mm, Pats and Camera. Hannah Tay. Books Like Woe. And uh, Jashana C. So yeah, there you have it. That's what I made of the BookTuber Snooker book tag. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments. Oh, hello. My alarm's gone off. Girlfriend hates it, but it makes sure I get out of bed. Let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.